What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Sir, can you help me? Can you give me my money? Can you give me a different pair of earrings? Anything? No. Oh wait. No. Y'all sure no. don't tell me. Are you angry because your coat's so tight? No, my coat ain't tight. You show my back there. I think it's time to leave. I think it's time for the baby to get back. Good day, folks. Today we will show you all the moments when hardcore pawn gets scammed. Y'all got all these phones right here. What about that one right there? Do that one work? Pull the things up over your ears a little because you Do clearly can't hear me. There, it's off. Do this there. phone work? It's a simple question. Does this phone work? You know what, Joel? Can you go show him how it works? Uh, take a picture out in the parking lot. Don't touch my phone, show, dog. Show him how the phone works outside. Why are you touching me? OK, just don't touch me then. I'm going to be back. I'm coming for my money. Is that clear? Send me a picture of the receipt from your phone. Watch bands. Les had a trusted friend who came to the shop to purchase a valuable Breitling watch. They agreed on a price tag of 42000 but the customer did not have the cash on hand at the time of transaction. Instead, the customer gave Les an IOU for $42,500 to be paid the next day. When am I going to get paid? By tomorrow. I know he wants it. Forty-two five tomorrow? I will have the payment for you by tomorrow. Gary, you got a deal. Sign it. Les agreed to this arrangement and handed over the watch. However, instead of receiving the cash payment, the customer sent 130 cases full of watch bands as payment. In the following episode, Les was trying to resolve the situation as he had recently been criticized for making a few bad deals. My dad's You're more very lax. lucky. You're more lax. He's at what very you do. lax. I didn't have faith with the guy. There's nothing people. to hold him to pay you, for this one. You're exactly right. My dad has more I faith. My faith dad's more people. lax. He started selling the watch bands at a discounted price of $2 each to recover some of the loss from the original deal. A stupid purchase. Pawn shop owners often experience uncertainty when it comes to selling their products. The value of an item may be high, but it can take years for it to sell and for the owner to receive their money back. Interested in what you know about it? It's in really nice condition. The engine's in really good shape. I saw two guys at a Detroit car show. They came into American Jewelry and Loan to see my 41 Chevy. This car has been sitting back here for a while, but now I could be looking at doubling my money on this sale. Seth and Ashley say that this stuff is just taking up space, but I'm saying it's waiting for the right buyer. This was the case for Les, who owns a pawn shop. He recently made a deal to sell a car for $14,500. I figured I could come up to 14, but I really wouldn't want to pay any more than that for it. I'll tell you what, you're at 14, we're at 15, 14, 5, we got a deal. 14 is not horrible, that's a good offer. 14, 5, we got a deal. 14, 5? It's well worth the money. I'll go 14.5. 14.5, you got a deal. But his children were unimpressed when he told them about the sale. So let me tell you the great news. I sold that 41 Chevy. That's a car that I paid 5,800 for. I got 14,500 bucks. They pointed out that it took three years for the car to sell and that Les has a large collection of unsold cars in his shop. I'm not impressed. Oh, I'm not impressed at all. Do you know how many more you back there? Who cares? How long has it been sitting back there? Three years. Three years. Oh, my years. God. So? If I wanted to buy another car, I couldn't. There's not even enough space back there right now. So? Do you care? No. Of course I not. I don't care. I don't care. You know why? Because you're buying a whole bunch of junk for yourself. And where does it end up? And it you all know ends what? up back there. If I bought it for myself, I would be driving it. Instead, I made eight thousand seven hundred dollars you I come back here to gloat and my I great buy i don't really care i don't care what you have to say it's my store it's my the diamond scam. A woman who came into the shop was attempting to return diamond earrings, but she didn't have a receipt and claimed that a diamond was missing from one of the earrings. My niece bought me some earrings from here. Oh, that was she nice. Bought them, uh, one of the diamonds was missing, and I wanted to know, can I get my money back? Do you have the receipt? Uh, no. Do Give gifts come with a receipt? Yeah. yeah. Um, no, well, this one didn't. Ashley informed her that she couldn't return the earrings without a receipt, and even if she had one, the store policy does not allow for cash returns. She told you that, um, um, she bought them from us? Yes. So there's two problems here. The first problem, you don't have the receipt. If you had a receipt, it would look like this. Yeah. I know what a receipt would look like if I had one. Second of all, no cash on the receipt, it says no cash refund. However, the bigger problem was that the diamonds were fake. One more problem that's really key to this whole thing. Mm -hmm. These are fake. And we don't sell fake jewelry. The woman was attempting to scam the pawn brokers, but she was caught and became upset, yelling and causing a scene. Well, um, excuse me, anybody buying any jewelry from here, don't get no more jewelry from hey. here, because the 
something good. Hey, hey, no, hey, hey, no. hey, hey. Come on. I played this game before. I know this was a scam. Period. She refused to admit defeat and tried to continue her cash grab, but she was not allowed to stay in the store. Sir, can you help me? Can you give me my money? Can you give me a different pair of earrings? Anything? No. Oh, wait. No. Your short no. don't tell me. Are you angry because your and coat's so tight? No, my coat ain't tight. You show my little back to, there. I think it's time to leave. I think it's time for the baby to get fed. Despite her efforts, she was unsuccessful in her scam and left the store empty handed. Her earrings are fake. We didn't sell them. Get out of here. Get out of the store. Two options. You, you pick whichever option you want. You can leave. No, I'm Second going option. to wear. Second option what? is you can get the receipt and then no can mother you finish me. It ain't can no you receipt. Finish me. No. no. It's time to leave. I'm not going nowhere. I bet you are. No, I bet I ain't. This is Joe. Joe. How are you He's going to show you to the front door. Wait a mother minute. Now get your hands off. I guess you'll leave. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be back. I'll be back. See you then. Money laundering. It is surprising to learn that some of the shop's employees have also been caught scamming the business. One of the worst offenders was a former counter attendant named Christina. So here's what I need you to do. Go get security. Then go get Ashley and Seth, and then bring me in Christina. You know why you're in here? Is that your merchandise? Yes. Put up the loan. Okay, I rolled it up. But I only did it when we were busy. So that who was at the or was at the desk just never paid any attention to it. In a season six episode, it was discovered that Christina had been falsifying jewelry loans and taking more money than she was giving to the customers, pocketing the difference for herself. And what about this piece right here? How much did you give a loan on for? 450. 450. How much would we normally give a loan on that for? I've seen some go for 50. So in other words, you wrote up a fake ticket and stole money from us. Please tell me the truth. I can't hear you. Yeah. Yes. This amounted to over a thousand dollars stolen from the shop. How much money do you think you've stolen from American Jewelry? Uh, I don't know. Would you say it's over a thousand dollars? I don't understand what that is. Is that yes or no? Yeah. Yes. Hey, it's Seth from American Jewelry. How are you? Sorry to bother you, but uh, I just busted another one of my employees stealing. When confronted by Les, Seth, and Ashley about the incident, Christina was promptly arrested and taken away in handcuffs by the police. Tell me something that's gonna get you out of jail today. Who's doing to me today? I don't know anybody that's doing today. You're sure? But you've already admitted that you stole more than $1,000, correct? Last chance, because once that door opens and the cops come in here, I have no option. Last chance. She's writing loans up for herself. Okay. And not bringing the merchandise in. Once that door opens, it's over. I want to help you, Christina. Okay. Okay. Pregnancy deal. It is common for pawnbrokers to hear a variety of stories from customers, ranging from tales of family deaths and unemployment to simply being in hard times. Some of these stories may be genuine, while others may be more dubious. One such case involved a recently divorced, unemployed mother with another child on the way who came into the pawn shop. And last week when you were here, how much were you quoted? Well, I was quoted $20 for it. You were quoted $20? All I have is $10. I'm a single mother. My husband just left me. Really? Yes. Do you work? I try to look for a job and stuff, but it's just hard right now. And this is something that I want to get for my baby. This would mean so much to me. The woman's story nearly convinced Ashley to sell a $20 rocking horse for only $5 and even offered her a job at the shop. You give me five, and then my gift to you is the remaining 15. That'll be great. That'll be really great. Okay. It means so much to me. So let's take it out to her car right now. And seriously, after you have your baby, come back here. I'll have you fill out a job application. I sure will. However, before the woman could leave with the rocking horse, it was revealed that she was scamming the shop. Okay, so this is your car? Yes. Do you want me to open it for you? I'll open it. Again, thank you so oh, much. Oh, my pleasure. Anything to help you and the baby? Woo! I even offered her a job after she had the baby. I think she just had the baby. 
iPhone scam. A common occurrence at Hardcore Pawn is that customers often do not have receipts when they are asked. This is usually because they never actually did business at the shop in the first place and are attempting to scam the store. One example of this occurred when a man tried to trade in his old iPhone for a new one, claiming that it was faulty. Hey, what's up, dog? How are you doing? Well, I just got this phone that I bought here like two, three days ago, and this shit don't work. The camera don't work. It keeps freezing and like that. Did you download a camera function? No, it clearly got a camera. Why would I have to download it? Just asking. However, Rich quickly realized that the man's story was a scam because he claimed to have bought the phone just two days prior and accused an innocent employee of selling him the broken phone without a receipt. I need a new phone, dog. Okay, you got your receipt? No, I ain't got it with me. I ain't bring it. First of all, we don't sell iPhones for 200 bucks. And second of all, I'm not giving them without a receipt. Just give me another phone. That's all I'm asking for. As soon as you give me that receipt, I can see what I can do for you. I don't have my receipt. I just clearly told you that, man. Clearly you told me that. So clearly I have to tell you to fix this that or... without the receipt, there's nothing I can do for you. And getting just irate with me, I'm going to help you out. Rich was not able to give the man a replacement phone, and he was asked to leave the shop. Nice try, boy. Y'all got all these phones right here. What about that one right there? Did that one work? Pull the things up over your ears a little because you Did clearly can't hear me. Bear, it's off. Do this Bear. phone work? It's a simple question. Does this phone work? You know what, Joel? Can you go show him how it works? Uh, take a picture out in the parking lot. Don't touch my phone, show, dog. Show him how the phone works outside. Why are you touching me? OK, just don't touch me then. I'm going to be back. I'm coming for my Money. Is that clear? Send me a picture of the receipt from your phone. Remote thief. Barbara and her nephew Leon are in the pawn shop looking for a replacement remote for their TV. According to them, they had recently purchased their TV back after losing the original remote in a pawn. Who are you? Good, I'm Seth. I'm Barbara. Nice to meet you. And this is my nephew, nice Leon. Leon. Hey, Leon, nice to meet you. We came up here a couple of weeks ago, and my nephew had pawned his TV uh -huh. in. And when he came back to get it, it was already being sold. It right. was on the shelf. Right. So he had to rebuy the TV. But he got home, and he realized that it wasn't a remote to it. However, when they went to use the TV, they discovered that no remote had been included with the package. Understandably, they came to the pawn shop seeking some kind of compensation. So you lost an item in pawn. Right, so he pawned about three months ago. Yeah, so we're up here now, and all he wants is a remote for his teeth. However, when Seth asked for a receipt to confirm the purchase, Barbara and Leon could only produce a barcode for the TV. You have a receipt that you, where you purchased it? The only thing uh, I have is the barcode. The barcode, right. That's all I got it right here. That's the barcode for the TV. Oh, you took the barcode off the TV. Yeah, if we could just get, get a remote, remote for the TV, you right. know, that'd be all good. You know. If it didn't come with the remote, I don't know if I had the remote. It was clear that this would not be enough to prove that they had actually purchased the TV. When I rebought my TV, yeah. they didn't have a remote control. And right. I know I pawned the TV in with right. the remote control. Right. So right. why I don't have it now? You know what well, I'm saying? Well, you bought it without the remote control. Well, well y'all don't even sell TVs without remotes. Sure I do. No, you don't. That's news to me because I set the policy. In the end, the duo left the pawn shop empty-handed and disappointed, having failed in their attempt to get a cheap universal remote. Basically, can we get a remote? I can sell you a universal remote no, if you no, like. No, 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 no. He pawned the no. TV. It was a remote toy. You want to buy one? So you give my nephew his remote the right power. now. You want to see? You are a nephew. I got this. Nephew. Where's the remotes? You got one back there somewhere. I got lots of them. It's you back get there the somewhere. Yeah, yeah. No. It's back there. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, so go back there. It's auntie. It's auntie. 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 We're going to get your remote. Come on, read. So we can conclude that this was a frustrating and ultimately unsuccessful visit to Hardcore Pawn for Barbara and Leon. What kind of business are you running here? A pretty good one. Your remote stealer! I mean, have a nice day. Your remote stealer! I don't think he heard. Security officer. For weeks, Les had been noticing that various items were going missing from the store, and he suspected that someone on his team was responsible. Go right around the side and we'll take care of it. Perfect. Cool? Hey guys. Okay, I gotta go. Yeah. We'll uh, come back here. The detectives have arrived. I need to tell them what's been happening and show them the evidence. Determined to catch the culprit, Les set up a hidden camera in the store and placed a diamond ring as bait. The next day, Les was shocked to see that the ring was gone, and he couldn't believe his head of security would be the thief. Keep your eyes on the front door. Okay. Not now. Joe has no idea we're onto him. We have to keep him occupied so he'll stay in the store until we're ready to have his ass arrested. I said not now.
However, as he reviewed the footage from the camera, it became clear that Joel had taken the ring. Feeling betrayed and violated, Les called the police to report the theft. My head of security is a thief. Hey, Joe. I'm bringing him into my office where I had police waiting for him. You gotta ask your question. You're the only one who would know this answer. Okay. He knew he was in trouble once we walked through that door. Joe, what did you steal from me? Tell me the truth. He said, yes, I did. The detectives call in uniformed officers to put the cuffs on him. And then he reaches into his pocket and pulls out an assortment of jewelry worth over seven thousand dollars i almost had a heart attack it was difficult for him to believe that joel who had been working with him for over three years could have done something like this this is my loyal employee my head of security the guy that i trusted for the last three years the incident was a stark reminder of the importance of trust and loyalty in any business relationship. Stolen microphones. The situation was already questionable when Rich saw what was happening. But I'm looking to find these uh, microphones I picked up from a uh, concert last night. Uh, let me see. Nice. It was the story of how the customer supposedly acquired a brand new set of microphones that really set off alarm bells for Rich and made him suspect something was wrong. They just threw them out in the crowd and I picked them up. So they threw these things out to the crowd and you just happened to catch one? So at what point did they actually take this off of the, the rack and put it nicely inside of this thing? No, I got Zip them. it up and then threw it out there. When did that happen? It just got out in the crowd and I picked them up. Really? Hold on. It's not normal for someone to randomly give out microphones to an audience. As it turned out, Rich's suspicions were correct. Keep an eye on him. Hi, how are you? I'm from American Jewelry. I have a gentleman down here who is trying to sell me some microphones. Are you missing some? Exactly. I've got them. You're going to need to come down here. All right, thanks. Ash, call the cops. Hi, um, this is American Jewelry, and we have stolen merchandise. Thank you. A local club owner soon claimed the microphones as his own after confirming with the scammers that they had been stolen from a show the night before. How you doing? Good, what's up? How you doing? Good. Hey, Mike, what's going on? I'm so glad the club manager's finally here so we can figure out what's going on. Last night, somebody slid in under a cage that we had and um, lifted two of these mics. That's it. So we're waiting for the police to come. Okay. When the police were called, it became clear that the teenager had tried to make a quick profit by selling stolen property. Oh, they're leaving. No, they man, you leave. can't leave. The cops told us to hold you here. The cops are coming. Well, they can wait. Well, I think... Why do we got to stay? We all got to stay. I'm not the person that came We're all involved in the group. Anything. That's the way it works. Until we know what's going on, that's the way it's going to be. His plan failed miserably, and he was arrested. It is not worth the risk. Guitar theft. A music teacher came with a story about a guitar that had been pawned by the parents of one of his students. The teacher had loaned the guitar to the student, but apparently the parents had pawned it without the teacher's knowledge. Hey, how you doing? I'm good, sir. How are you? Good. My name is Vaughn. It's a pleasure to meet you, Your brother. name is what? Vaughn. Vaughn? Yeah, I'm a music teacher, and I loaned my guitar to one of my students. Mm -hmm. When I talked to her mother, she ended up letting me know that they put it in a pawn shop up in American Jury and Loan. Okay. Les listened to the teacher's story, but it was clear that there wasn't much he could do to help. It seemed that the teacher was attempting to deceive Les and get the guitar out of the shop. See that bass right there? It's a Fender. Did you make a police report? No. Otherwise, I would have to sell it back to you at retail. Now, if you bring me the police report, then all your obligation would be is to pay me what we paid her and then she would make restitution. When Les asked for proof that the guitar belonged to the teacher, the man claimed that he had already told Les that it was his. Are you telling me that I got to pay you some money? Why well, do I got to pay you anything? Because we have money invested in it, and how do I know that that's your guitar? Because I told you it's my guitar. Why can't you just go give it to me now? Because I already told you it was mine. Without a police report or a receipt showing me that that guitar is yours, I can't do anything for you. However, Les was not convinced, and eventually the teacher was escorted out of the shop, shouting and claiming to be the next Rick James. I've been playing in Detroit for over 15 years, and you can't give me my back? Huh? Okay. Okay, you just gonna be calm, okay. Now it's time to go. It's time to go? It's time to go. 
Okay, look, wait a minute, wait a minute, bro. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, minute. Come on now. Let's have a good day. Hey, hey look, let's have a good you get me up out of here. Let's have a good day. Come on. Man, I ain't your brother, man. Oh, Cause you right. working Come for on. him. You're right. You're right. Come on. I ain't right. your brother. Yeah, you working for him. I know. Walking up here, y'all got Rick Ross in security. I'm the next damn Rick James, bitch. No, you're not. This is where we'll end our video. We hope you enjoyed watching it. Make sure to comment, hit the like and subscribe buttons, hit that notification bell for more videos like this, and share this video with your family and your friends. See you soon.